Man Up, brought to you by Construction Professionals, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. Join Joe Stopulis and Father Zach Kowski every Monday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. And now, it's time to man up. Another year goes by, more beers, more smoke. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios. Heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. Around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Also, please subscribe to our podcast on iTunes and like us on Facebook. I'm Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zakowski. Today we're joined by a good friend of ours, Kelly Wolf, and we're going to discuss Jordan Peterson's new book, The Twelve Rules for Life. Father Zach, would you please open us up in a word of prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you gave us Our Lady as the model disciple, as a prayer warrior, and as a mother to all of us. We ask her special prayers today. We ask her special intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed, blessed art thou amongst women, women. And blessed, blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mary, Mother of God, God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Victory, pray for, pray for us. us. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. By the way, we say that before every football game at Dowling. We say, Our Lady, Queen of Victory. The guys pray. scream, pray for us, and but we weren't going to do that. It's worked out pretty well for it's you over the last pretty well. five years. So. Yeah. Father Jack, Zach, I do joke that you are going to be recruited by Notre Dame. You've got five, to five, five back to back to back to back to well, back state championships. Don't give anything away, but I don't want you. I don't want you leaving us. You're a five star <laughs> recruit for the University of Notre Dame. So it is back to school time uh, today. We've got you know, school starting up this week. Uh, Jordan Peterson is the topic of conversation today. The Twelve Rules for Life, and you know one of his. I, I don't know if I call it surprising. I don't think when he wrote the book that we'll get into next segment, I, I don't think he was expecting it to be such a hit with young men. But that seems to be what has attracted the most to him is this, this young generation of men. So it, it does tie in well, especially as back to school, young high schoolers, young uh, people going off to college. A uh, special time of year for you, Father, uh, in the position that you're in. Yeah, we have. We're going back to de- we're back in school this week and been making preparations uh, these last few weeks to get back into the the new school year so yeah we're all very excited to get going and uh i think i think young people they like a challenge he's a young he's a great challenge for young men and women and i think one of the great kind of emerging minds of our time that's kind of come out by surprise yeah and it's like he came out of nowhere here the last couple of years so i think he's got a lot of good insights to offer he's not catholic i'm not sure if he would call himself Christian. I think he's or what a he theist of some sort. Yeah. Yes, uh, but he's been talked about on Bishop Barron's radio show mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Catholic Answers Live. So a lot of Catholic uh, mainstays are talking about him uh, because of the people who are receiving his message. I mean, especially yeah, I've already mentioned, you know, but young men are hearing this this call to action of of you know stand up with your shoulders straight up with your shoulders back and, and take ownership over your life um and so i think you know we talk about when when children go off to children when kids go off to school especially into college you know reach out to them uh help them uh as they, as they make that transition to kind of an unknown part of their life uh when it's so easy to lose the faith uh it's also as i would argue a great opportunity to, to grow in your faith you can now take time and ownership to to own the faith that you've been given uh, I know for me personally in college, it ended up being a very fruitful time. Uh, so while it can be a terrible, uh, as studies would show, detrimental time, it can also be a fruitful time if you're getting involved in, in the, the Newman Centers uh, in, with Focus or whatever uh, you can find at the college campus. So encourage those you know going off to school uh, to do that, to take ownership of their faith. Well, we're going to take a, a quick break, and when we come back, we will have Kelly Wolf in studio with us, and we're going to dive deep into, on a two-part episode, The 12 Rules for Life by Jordan Peterson. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Construction Professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work firsthand. It's very impressive. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. cpcustomhomes.com. This is Iowa Catholic Radio.
St. Anthony's Knights of Columbus invites you to their 2018 golf outing September 14th at Blank Golf Course in Des Moines. Registration begins at 7 a.m. with a shotgun start at 8. The fee is $75 per golfer and sponsorship opportunities are available. 100% of the proceeds benefit the parish and school. The afternoon includes mini golf at the Blank facility and bingo at the St. Anthony Parish Hall. For more information, go to stanthonydsm.org. Since 1924, St. Vincent de Paul has been helping those less fortunate work towards self-sufficiency. Last year, St. Vincent de Paul helped over 20,000 individuals with food, clothing, and shelter, while also offering classes in financial literacy, high school completion, career readiness, and prisoner re-entry. svdpdsm.org, 515-282-8327. Shop, donate, volunteer, serve. This message was brought to you by Homemakers Furniture. My help comes from you You're right here putting through you can Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zach Kouchke. Today we're joined in studio by Kelly Wolf. Kelly Wolf is a friend of the show. He's in our small group. He's a black belt he's a in taekwondo right yes he served our country he's a cfo he does a lot of things most interesting man he's the most interesting man in the world and today he joins us uh to discuss the topic of 12 rules for life which is the uh now best-selling book by jordan peterson uh which has gained acclaim all over the the world uh and it's an unbelievable book kelly introduced me to it and i've studied a lot of what uh, Jordan Peterson's done. So, Kelly, welcome to the show. Thank you. I apologize to all my psychologist friends out there. We have uh, so many <laughs> have so many psychologist <laughs> friends. It's incredible. Well, this, Do you want to name names? Nope. No. This book uh, really kind of took uh, the world by storm, and so we wanted to make sure we had a couple. We're going to do two, two episodes on it. And, you know, Jordan Peterson, for those who don't know, Jordan Peterson – uh, is a doctor of psychology. He's a professor, and he was uh, he, he studied at Harvard, and he's a professor there. And now he's, he was in Canada most recently at uh, the University of Toronto, where he uh, basically s- s- spoke out against uh, the establishment. The, the The government said that he had to use these forty seven something like that gender pronouns, e ye wing, whatever these things are, uh, and he he said no. I'm not going to do that that's that's terrible for our students it's terrible for our society and just by that simple no standing up against the chaos that's going on uh that you know he got into a lot of hot water uh got fired from his job uh and started kind of this this movement of people kind of hitting the pause button uh on a lot of the craziness that's going on especially when it comes to, to gender roles in society today uh and now he has found himself that was probably two years ago, something like that. Yeah, yeah about two years ago. Now he's thrust uh, into the limelight, and he's literally doing tours now around the world, which Kelly and I will be a part of when he comes to Des Moines here in October. Um, and, and his book has become an international bestseller. So uh, it, do yourself a favor, and we'll plug this multiple times. Just go listen to Jordan Peterson, what he's doing. Uh, we'll plug reading the book. Um, but we're going to do a dive into the book, the chapters, what we got out of it. And we just want to share with our listeners, you know, a bit about the 12 rules for life and, and talk through uh, talk through the rules specifically and what we, Kelly and I, got out of them. So I'm going to turn this over to Father Zach. You can hey, what, did I not get anything out of it? You can, run the, you can run the interview. You haven't read it as thoroughly as we have. No, you you yeah, have okay. read it, though, parts. No, I'm going to walk out now. Okay, fine. See you later. <laughs> I have read parts of it. Um, so what we wanted to do today, everybody, was just discuss, especially for married men, or those seeking their their spouse or their vocation to kind of apply this book, these twelve rules for life, the antidote to chaos from Jordan Peterson to to apply that to our life. So we just wanted to start with kind of the rule number one. And by the way, we're going to do this show in kind of two parts. So we're going to just do the first six rules. We'll see how many we make it through. We think we'll see how many we're going to try. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So rule number one is stand up straight with your shoulders back you guys want to talk about yeah, that yeah we'll start with uh, just kind of the top i think rule number one uh first and foremost he lays out the theory of the book uh in rule number one um which is this this order and chaos uh the 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 sub headline of the book is 12 rules for life an antidote to chaos so it talks a lot about order and chaos and just the the play between those two and he uses the genesis narrative a lot 
Yeah, in fact, he's got a uh, whole YouTube series where he goes through Genesis, and it's not theological by any means. It's a psychologist's point of view, but it's interesting to listen to. Um, this this rule, I think, is, is most famous probably because he talks about the lobsters and the serotonin and how lobsters that fight and lose, they don't, they're more likely to lose the next fight, but if you give them an injection of serotonin, all of a sudden they puff up and they do better. And, that, you know, that kind of applies to our lives. You know, if you stand up straight, you know, with your shoulders back, you have more confidence. You can go out and do things. Um, you know, it just it helps everything, it seems. Well, he talks, you know, about how as human beings, we, you know, there are hierarchies within, and this is, we'll hit on a lot of these, a lot of the, the chapters overlap, but it talks about hierarchies in society and how societies automatically have hierarchies and people are trying to break down hierarchies today. They're trying to make everyone equal. Men and women are all equal. Everything's the exact same. And he's saying, well, no, they're not. I mean, look at the way lobster, look at the way crabs, look at the way all these other parts of society, uh, other animal kingdoms work and it's very much a hierarchical structure. Um, and because of that, we are naturally inclined to also have hierarchical structure. And the problem with with trying to break that down is, we're kind of seeing some of the fruits of that, is that we're, we're trying to make men and women equal, which they are equal in their aptitude. They're, you know, so they're, they're equal in their, their value in God's eyes, but men and we, women are complementary is what they are. We're complementary. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, trying to say you can be whatever you want to be is not always necessarily the truth. And he gets to that and talks about in the animal kingdom how they understand uh, naturally how the, the genders are, what the, the, the proper gender roles are. And he kind of gets into that uh, even in this first chapter. But stand up with your, your stand up straight with your shoulders back, I think, can also be an attitude towards, if we're going to talk about the spiritual life here, having confidence. Having confidence in yourself and your abilities, having confidence, especially you know, as Catholics, as Christians, uh, in our faith. Uh, and I, I would argue that the way we get that confidence, what we get that, is, is through studying Scripture, through learning about uh, God, learning about the church, learning about why we have the confidence. We've talked about this in many episodes. Uh, you know, The more you study Scripture, the more you study our, our church, the more you understand the teachings, the more confidence you have to go out and proclaim and the word. Absolutely. And I think with this chapter, Stand Up Straight with Your Shoulders Back, you know, we talk about being defeated and how that kind of leads with the lobsters into a cycle or a, a cycle either way. If you're defeated, you kind of get in this cycle of defeat. And also, if you win, you kind of get in the cycle of victory. And so I think for us, too, we want to, as Catholic men, get into a good momentum, good habits. And one of the things that uh, Jordan Peterson talks about is he when he counsels patients he asks them do you get up at about the same time every day do you eat breakfast in the morning you know do you have these small things of order which actually are big things in your life and so he's really that first chapter is all about order and chaos in our life he says standing up straight with your shoulders back is something that is not only physical because you're not only a body you're a spirit so to speak, uh, a psyche as well. Standing up physically also implies and evokes and demands standing up metaphysically. He gets very deep into, into this spiritual counterbalance that we have in society. Uh, again, something that he, he's very not religious. I mean, he, he brings out, he talks a ton about scripture in this book, but he's not a, a devout Christian by any means. Right. Uh, but he does talk about how we're the spiritual being and people, again, want to push that out and, and push it to the side. And, uh, he very much brings it to the forefront, understanding that there's, there's a spiritual battle here uh, of good and evil. Uh, and then the last uh, quote of the whole chapter is, so attend carefully to your posture. Quit drooping and hunching around. Speak your mind. Put your desires forward as if you had the right to them, at least the same right as others. Walk tall and gaze forthrightly ahead. Dare to be dangerous. Encourage the serotonin to flow plentifully through the neutral pathways, desperate for its calming influence. So stand up straight. Stand up straight. Shoulders. <laughs> We're all sitting right now. Okay, rule number two. Treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. Again, treat yourself like someone... You are responsible for helping. You know, as we were preparing for this show, one thing we talked about with this chapter is um, this, this leads into confession. You know, I mean, w one of the best things you can do for yourself is go to confession and you're worth it. And maybe it's been a long time since you've gone. Um, 
don't be embarrassed. You know, Father Zach has told me he's heard everything, and I don't know if that's, that's true. That's because he's my, he's my confessor. That's why. <laughs> that's the only reason he's heard everything. Uh, there are some really great quotes from this chapter. And, I, I, again, I think he's kind of setting the pyramid here. Is, uh, first, he explains this order and chaos uh, and how you need to be able to stand on your two feet. And then the second one, he's saying, okay, now you've got to have the self-confidence. So many people today don't even have the confidence in themselves that they're someone of value uh, worth helping. So uh, there are necess- this is a quote from the book. There are necessary elements uh, whose interactions define drama and fiction. One is chaos, and the other is order. The third is the process that mediates between the two. I, I love how he talks in this chapter about how you cannot live, you have to live in both. If you just try to live a life in order, you'll never, you'll never do anything. You'll be stuck in this childish kind of Peter Pan world where you don't ever get out and experience anything. You just stay in your own world. What, and if you lived in a world that's only chaos, you would go crazy. So you've got to take these ebbs and flows of being in order and then reaching out into chaos and then stepping forward, make a step, back to and find your, your, your grounding again and then take another step out. Uh, and in doing that, you're going to make progress in, in life. And I would argue in the spiritual life as well, right? So doing things that are uncomfortable, you know, uh, in, the, in the spiritual life, you know, maybe you've never been to adoration before. You know, you mentioned confession. Maybe you aren't going to confession. These aren't easy things to do, but then you go in, you do it, and you come back to your where you're comfortable, and then you once you're comfortable, you reach back out and do something and push yourself further. Maybe stick around after you receive the Eucharist. Don't just leave right away. You know, that's one small. That's step. a good one. Yeah. You know, maybe praying with your spouse that might be uncomfortable for you today. You know, that might be something that you've never prayed openly uh, with your significant other. That might be uncomfortable. As you put yourself out there and you make yourself vulnerable. Uh, you'll understand that, you know, oh, gosh, I made a step forward. That's, that's, that's progress. Uh, and then, you know, I, I wouldn't call it chaos, but it could feel like chaos because it is uncomfortable. Uh, when you're, this is another quote from the book. When the ice is skating on a salad, that's order. When the bottom drops out and things fall apart and you plunge through the ice, that's chaos. Yeah, I think there's uh, some great points he makes in this chapter. And one of them is that we actually, we have a responsibility to care for ourselves, And I think very often we're really good at giving directions to other people like, oh yeah, it's so obvious. Like just do this, this, and this. And especially, you know, as priests, a lot of times we can tell people to, to pray or to go to confession and all these, you know, devotions and serving the poor. But I think asking, you know, looking at our own self and saying, well, I have an, opp- I have an opportunity here, a responsibility to also take care of myself and um, and all that's based in the fact that like we deserve respect. You know, Jordan Peterson talks about we deserve respect. You deserve respect. And so this kind of it starts with it begins with me. Conversion of the world also begins with me. Yeah. The act, the specific quote the fathers uh, get into there says to treat yourself as if you were someone you were responsible for helping is instead to consider what would be truly good for you. It is not what would you want. It is also not quote unquote what would make you happy. Uh, figuring out what would be truly good for you. Uh, and then after that, shortly after that, he says, you could help direct the world on its careening trajectory a bit more towards heaven and a bit more away from hell. Once having understood hell, researched it, so to speak, particularly your, your own individual hell, you could decide against going there or creating that. You could aim elsewhere. You could, in fact, devote your entire life to this. Uh, but again, you've got to first figure out what those things are you got you have to understand what is good and what is evil and make the choice then uh, to go for the good so the, the last quote i have in this chapter that i wanted to share is strengthen the individual start with yourself take care with yourself define who you are refine your personality choose your destination and articulate your being okay rule number three so we are not going to get through. We, we might not even get through six. Uh, rule number three: Make friends with people who want the best for you. We've done entire episodes on this. I mean, our small group it's is basically small group and, mentality. And I've talked a lot about this with with other friends as they're trying. And we we even talked about this in our small group recently. Like, if you want to become the best person you can be, you've got to surround yourself with people who are aiming for great things. If you're still hanging around with people that make you a worse person, uh, that's not a good thing. Yeah, I mean, you are the average of the five people you hang around, yeah. right? So make them good people. Yeah. Uh, I think this is this is probably the chapter that I've experienced the most. I feel like I have um, 
you know, I've got a, a leg to stand on from, from life experience. I just notice in my own life, the more I surround myself with good Catholic men, uh, we talked about last I don't know, men's group recently, we talked about if you're trying to, to get away from the things of the world or unplug from technology and, and social media and all, you know, all this stuff that you're trying to do and, and live a life more towards God, it's a lot easier to do that when you are surrounding yourself with people who are doing the same thing. Right. Well, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? So that's what we do in our small group. I mean, this last month we fasted from social media. Mm -hmm. Um, That's a great thing to do, right? I mean, how often do we, I as an individual, do I ever think about fasting from social media? I mean, not before I was in a small group, that's for sure. And we were challenged to, you know, we had to go to mass an extra day per per week, uh, go to confession once a month. Those things are, we're pushing each other towards good things. Uh, And then and you're also you're also interacting with people who are striving for greatness, uh, whether it's as fathers or just individual people or, or in work or whatever you're doing, you're you're striving for holiness wherever you're at. Um, and it's something that I've learned as a father, as a as a business person, um, as a as a Catholic. I didn't realize that when I was 22, but now that I'm 32, I realize the the value. And the, just the absolute importance of having uh, people around you who, who are like that. So some quotes from this one it says, here's something to consider. If you have a friend whose friendship you wouldn't recommend to your sister or your father or your son, why would you have such a friend yourself? You should choose people who want things to be better, not worse. It's a good thing, not a selfish, selfish thing, to choose people who are good for you. It's appropriate and praiseworthy to associate with people whose lives would be improved if they saw your life improve. Uh, anything to add to that chapter? We made it through three rules. Um, I suppose we can try and fit one more in before the break. Okay, I guess. sounds we're, good. We're really not doing a very good job. Of so this. Rule, Sorry, <laughs> rule number four, compare yourself to who you were yesterday, not who someone else is today. Yeah, I mean, huge. yeah, this is this is a great rule. I mean, this basically... Did you just say huge? I said it's huge, huge with an H. It's huge. Uh, for the record. <laughs> you did the Trump hands and everything. <laughs> you were saying... Yeah, no. yeah this, is, this is a great rule we'll because... Fix this in editing. <laughs> don't fix this. Um, yeah, because, I mean, it, you don't want to look at somebody else. I mean, it's so easy to be envious or jealous or, you know... Um, anything like that you want to be better than who you were yesterday right i mean that's really the litmus test that you should apply it against he says no matter how good you are and i like this is pretty fun no matter how good you are at something or how you rank your accomplishments there is someone out there that makes you look incompetent so we talked about this morning i I ran that race and i thought i did like a really good job and i beat my own personal goal there were people who were literally 35 percent faster than i was i'll never be able to do anything like that i think i'm good at piano some days and then i'm like i am not remotely close to even an average good piano player. And if you're only comparing yourself to the... I mean, you're always going to have people that are way better than you at, at everything. If you're winning at everything all the time... If you're you're getting sick of winning, for one. You're never going <laughs> to... If you're winning all the time, then you're not really getting better. You're not being challenged. Yeah. So I think there's something to be said for not always winning. That's true. And he says, he says, no matter how good you are at something or how you rank your accomplishments, there is someone out there who makes you look incompetent. And I think that that is something that, to me, uh, he, I've heard him on interviews say, listen, set the bar low. And someone challenged him, well, you set the bar low. He said, well, because for some people, just getting out of bed in the morning might be an accomplishment. Because yesterday they didn't. They were so depressed they didn't even get out of bed. So can, if you get out of bed then that day... That's a win. Raise the bar a little be- bit. Each you are day. better, yeah. yeah. And then maybe the next day you have to make your bed. And these are all, you know, theoretical ways of looking at it. But if you're comparing yourself, and, and Kelly, you'd said before, if you make yourself one percent better, yeah, that's like three thousand six hundred percent a year. If you make yourself one percent better every single day, the compounding interest on that uh, is incredible. So if you can compare yourself to who you know who you were yesterday, I, I look at myself with the books I read. I think the first year I read four books. And then the next, and they year had I, pictures, and they them. had pictures, big pictures, lots of pictures. And then maybe the next year was six, and the next year was twelve. You know, if I tried to read twenty-five books the first year, I never would have done it. And it's the same thing in anything you're doing, but it's way better to to look at yourself and just make and do what you can control within your little world rather than try to always compare yourselves to others. And that's what I think. There's so much depression out there today because people look and they watch, you know, the Kardashians, and they're like, oh, I don't have all that great stuff. I wish I had. I wish I had millions and bajillions of dollars. Well, 
Don't worry about that. Worry about what you can worry about in your own life. Yeah, you can you can only control what you can control, and that's all you can really control. The, the future is like the past. This is a quote. But there's a crucial difference. The past is fixed, but the future, it could be better. It could be better... Uh, it can be better some precise amount. Uh, the amount can be achieved perhaps in a day with some minimal engagement. And lastly, what could I do that I would do to make life a little better? So that takes us to rule five, uh, which will end. <laughs> I think we've got to just we're gonna wrap the show up and we'll start at rule five next time. We uh, didn't even make it to rule five. We are going very fast. So Kelly, will you join us then for the next the next episode on this? I will. All right, we'll stick around. We're going to head to a short break. Uh, when we return, we will wrap up the conversation on part one of 12 Rules for Life. This is Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, Golden Rule Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, for sponsoring my show. John Lee and Eddie in the Morning on Iowa Catholic Radio. Golden Rule, servicing Des Moines for over 15 years. They obey the rules to live by, especially the Golden Rule. Online at goldenrulephc.com. Support for Dowling Catholic Sports is provided by Two Rivers Glass and Door, providing commercial glass and aluminum storefronts. 515-222-4860. Joe at tworiversglass.com. My help comes from you. You're right here, pulling me through. You carry Welcome back to Man Up on IO Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis along with Father Zakowski. Any favorite takeaways from that conversation? Well, it was great having Kelly with us in studio, a good friend of ours. And I think uh, for me, this idea of uh, moving from chaos to order and thinking about the way that God brings order into chaos like in in the book of genesis when he uh, brings light out of darkness when he brings you know he separates the land and the earth when uh animals and plants spring forth and then i think also of you know jesus in the gospels like calming the calming the storm and calming the the disciples fears and again bringing in the midst of that really really scary time in their life and that scary just storm on the sea of galilee him bringing peace and calm and order to that. I think Jordan Peterson talks so often about these typologies that happen in the, in the, in the Bible and other, other parts of literature. And to me, when you look at chaos in the world, and I think he, he just kind of explains it. Listen, this is part of life. And I think the, the Bible does it too. It's just, there's, it's not all sunshine and roses all the time, as much as you'd like it to be. Life is hard. Are you saying me, as I would like you it to are, be? You are, yes. You would like, like just use sunshine and roses yes, all the time. But no, life is hard, and, and, it, and, it, and it is. And I think people, it's so, in, in 2018, when we have the gift of electricity and, and air conditioning and internet and cell phones, it's hard to remember or even think back to, you know, what was it like 200 years ago when everything was really hard and people grew up knowing life's tough. And there's there's chaos everywhere. How do we bring order to that chaos? And those rules we talked about today, you know, standing up uh, and, and taking ownership of your life and, and trying to make yourself a better person, that's how you can do it. And, and oftentimes it's just in your own your own little world. But uh, every little step we can take um, gets us closer to creating a little bit of order uh, in a world that's full of chaos. And it's as full of chaos today as, as it's ever been. Uh, and it's our responsibility, especially as Christians, to, to bring that light of Christ out into the world. Well, excited uh, to have Kelly on again next time uh, to go into part two of the remaining chapters. Uh, but thank you again for joining us on, on Man Up on IO Catholic Radio. For Father Zakowski, I'm Joe Stopulus. It's time to man up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness with Joe Stopulus and Father Zakowski. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you by Construction Professionals.